to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ here is water what does hinder me from being baptized Acts chapter 8, as we study the conversion of the Ethiopian eunuch. We welcome you today to our study of cases of conversion in the book of Acts. We're so glad that you've joined us for our study of the Word of God today. And friend, we want to encourage you to find your Bible. If you don't have it handy, find your Bible and have it ready as we're going to look to the Word of God on the great subject of salvation today. As always, today's lessons are being brought to you by congregations and members of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your area would love for you to stop by and visit them, whether it be on Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday evening for Bible study. They'd be happy to have you at any of their assemblies. I can assure you, you'll find friendly people there who love God, who love His Word, and who are concerned about men and women going to heaven. And so stop by and visit the local congregation of the Lord's Church in your area. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of the Word of God. The whole mission of this evangelistic work is to take the whole gospel to the whole world. We're concerned about souls, not your wallet, and we want to help people get to heaven. And so won't you visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can find all our material online available free of charge anytime. We have video lessons, audio lessons, transcripts, study questions, just a wide variety of good Bible study material. And friend, if you'd like to have a copy of this lesson or any of our vast library of lessons, we make those available to you free of charge. You can go to our website, thegospelofchrist.com. You can uh, access our media request form, down, have a free, video, free download immediately, or if you need a DVD or a CD, we will mail that to you free of charge. We'll even cover the postage on that. And so check out our website if you would. And then in our fast-paced world today, we want to encourage you to check out the Google app available both in the Play Store and on the Apple Store as well. Those are available free of charge and they're a great way to study the Word of God on the go. Today we're thinking about one of the great cases of conversion in the Scripture. We're thinking about Acts chapter 8. And so open your Bible, if you would, to the 8th chapter of the book of Acts. And we're going to be thinking about the conversion of the Ethiopian eunuch. Let's read the story in Acts chapter 8. Would you begin reading with me in Acts chapter 8? We're going to read verses 26 through the end of the chapter. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury, and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you're reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation his justice was taken away, and who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning at this scripture, 
Preach Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities, till he came to Caesarea. Friend, as you think about this wonderful story of salvation, there are several things we consider about the part each person played in this man learning the gospel. Ultimately, God played the major role in this man's salvation. He was going to worship God, and it was God who made salvation available, right? John 3, verse 16, we learn that God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes, it, believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We also learn that an angel played a part in this man's salvation. The angel told Philip, go over and overtake the chariot and study with this man in essence. In the Bible time, in the first century, and in the Old Testament time, God had used angels. And yet we know today that God preaches the message through Jesus and through the Word of God. Hebrews 1 verse 1, God who at various times and various ways spoke in time past through the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by His Son. We also know that Philip, a great man of God and preacher, played a part in this. Acts 8 verse 27, Philip would say, do you understand what you're reading? He would run over to the chariot. He would try to work with this man. And friend, men of God today, men and women, Christians, they have a part in trying to help people learn the gospel. Matthew 28, 18, the Bible teaches we're to go into all the world. We're to preach the message to every creature. Mark chapter 16, verse number 15. My friend, realize this also. The individual, the Ethiopian eunuch, he also had a part to play in learning about salvation. He, he asked, uh, and when he was asked, understand what you read. How can I unless someone teach me? He had a good heart. He was ready to learn, and he realized he was accountable for his own soul. Friend, every individual has a part in their salvation. Romans 14, verse 12, So then each of us, the Bible says, shall give account of himself to God. Now, as we learn about this example of salvation, we're going to notice the steps this man took to be saved and what men and women must do to be, to be saved today as well. What did this man have to do? This man, like every other person who's going to be saved, he had to hear the message of salvation. He had to hear the Word of God. Verse 28 tells us, He was reading the Scripture. Do you understand what you're reading? How can I unless someone teach me? He invited Philip up into the chariot, and he began at that point, in Isaiah 53, where he's already reading, and he heard, preached the Word of God, and that man heard the Word of God. Friend, to be saved, let's realize people have got to hear the Word of God to be saved. You know, there's some unique things about this man. He was already reading the Scripture, which is a great thing. We're told to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. This man respected the Scripture. We know that because he had been to worship and he was going home reading the Bible. Here's a man who respects God and who has a heart for worshiping God and doing good things. We know this man wasn't easily offended. You know, somebody could very easily get offended. Do you understand what you're reading? Who are you to ask me if I understand what I'm reading? I, I, no, he didn't have that attitude. If you can help me, Come up and help me. You see, we need the attitude of not being easily offended and being teachable and ready to learn the Word of God. This man wasn't above being taught. At, from that point, Philip taught him about Jesus Christ. 
And friend, if a person's going to hear the Word of God and be saved, they've got to be teachable. Luke 11, verse 1, the disciples said to Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. And don't we need that same attitude? Lord, teach us. He want, this man wanted to learn about Christ. Of whom is the prophet talking? About himself or some other man? Here's a man who is eager, very eager to learn about Jesus and salvation. And no doubt, he's asking the right questions. And so Philip, from that point, he began to preach to him about Jesus. He took him from Isaiah 53 and he taught him Christ is the fulfillment of this prophecy. He preached about the, the suffering and the death of Jesus, which is the core of what he's reading in Isaiah 53. No doubt. He, as he read about the lamb being led to a shearer silent, he opened not his mouth. He began to tell him about Jesus before Pilate, before Herod, how he was beaten, how he was mocked, how he was crucified, about his death, burial, and resurrection. And no doubt that led him to learning about how to become a Christian. For we know that's true when he gets to the point of verse 36. Now, he's been teaching them about Jesus, right? We don't have everything that he said. What that man says, when, as he's learning about Jesus, in his mind, you can envision this, he looks up and there's a body of water. Here's water. What must I do uh, to be baptized? Is there anything that hinders me from being baptized? That man got the point of what he heard, and he was ready to obey God's message. And so this man heard the Word of God. But there was a hindrance. What was it? Would you look in your Bible in Acts chapter 8, verse 36 and 37. See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. There was something standing in the way of standing between this man and being baptized into Christ. What was it? He had to believe. If you believe with all your heart, you may be baptized. Friend, hear me well today. Not only do you have to hear the Word of God to be saved, you must believe Jesus is the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Jesus said it. John 8, verse 24, Unless you believe that I am He, you'll surely die in your sins. But when we say belief, what are we really talking about? We're not talking about just a, a, a mental idea here. We learn about the commitment in Acts chapter 8, verse 36 and 40, verse 37, don't we? Here's water, what hinders me? Listen to this. If you believe with all your heart. Friend, that suggests not just the, the mental acknowledgement, but the commitment that's made there. Luke 9, verse 23. Jesus said, If any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily. There's the idea. Taking up the cross daily and following Jesus Christ. But we don't want to underestimate, undervalue here today the importance of believing. Friend, if a person won't believe in Jesus, it's impossible for that person to be saved. John 8, 24, Jesus said, Unless you believe that I am He, you'll surely die in your sins. If I don't believe in Jesus, friend, I'm going to die in sin and go to hell. God doesn't want that. We don't want that. That's why it's essential to be saved. But friend, listen carefully also. Salvation does not end. A person is not saved at the point of belief. How do we know that? Belief alone doesn't save, and the Bible clearly teaches that. Listen to James 2.24. James says, We see then, that a man is justified by works, listen to this, the only time it occurs in the Bible, and not faith alone. Does the Bible teach faith alone? Yes, it does, and here's what it says. It teaches it won't save you. We're not saved by faith alone. Friend, if all you've got is belief, you're no different than all the demons in the halls of hell. What do we mean by that? James 2, verse 17 through 19, even the demons believe and tremble. The demons believe. They recognize Jesus as the Son of God, and yet that belief only creates shuddering, trembling in them. Are we going to say all the demons in the halls of hell are going to be saved because they believe? Well, of course not, because belief alone 
will not save an individual. Friend, did you also notice Acts 8 verse 37? This man's heard the word of God. He believes in Jesus. And now there's something else he had to do. He had to confess his belief in Christ. Acts 8 verse 37, If you believe with all your heart you may, and that man boldly says, I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Friend, the Bible teaches that we've got to confess with our mouth Jesus as God's Son to be saved. Let me give you two passages. Matthew 10 verse 32 and 33, Jesus said, If you won't confess me before men, neither will I confess you before my Father who is in heaven. But if you will confess me before men, I'll also confess you before the Father who is in heaven. And yes, the Holy Spirit teaches making that confession is essential to salvation. Romans 10 verse 10, With the heart, with the mind, one believes unto righteousness, and listen to this, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And so this man, like the majority of the cases we find in the Bible, made the good confession. But no doubt, in learning about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, this man learned he had to change his life in turning to God. You see, in teaching him about Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, no doubt we would teach someone about repentance. The death that we die is a death to sin. We are buried with Christ in baptism and we rise out of that in walking in newness of life. And so no doubt this man would learn about the need to change his life. You see, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3 verse 23, And to become a Christian, Jesus teaches to obey Him, I must repent of sin. Acts 3 verse 19, Peter preached, Repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Luke 13 verse 3, Unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Acts, 6, Acts 17 verse 30 and 31, God commands all men everywhere to repent. And so to be saved, a person must be willing to repent of sin. But is that all a person has to do to be saved? Friend, this man was also taught the importance of baptism. Look in Acts chapter 8 again at verse number 36, and you can clearly see this man got the point, and he saw the importance of baptism in connection with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Watch Acts 8 verse 36 following again. The Bible says this, Now as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. Both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water. He baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away. So they saw the eunuch no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Friend, whatever was necessary hindering this man from being baptized, he was desperate to do it. Why? Why was he wanting to be baptized? Why was he desperate to be baptized? Friend, because baptism is the point we contact the death of Jesus, Romans 6, verses 3 and 4. What do we learn then? From this case of conversion, what do we learn about this man's baptism? We learn, first of all, this man was immersed to be baptized, and we learn it was essential to him rejoicing as a child of God. In the religious world today, as one mentions the word baptism, some people would say that baptism could be sprinkling, that might be pouring, that might be immersion. Friend, Acts 8.38 is a clear, clear picture of immersion. Now think about this. Here's a man traveling from Jerusalem to Ethiopia. Dry, parched, southern desert land. Do you think he's traveling on that journey without some water in his chariot? No doubt he's going to have to have a drink along the way. And so they still, though, stop the chariot. Why'd they have to stop the chariot? Why'd they both have to get out of the chariot? Philip could have run down and got some water if sprinkling or pouring were okay. Why'd they both go into the water? They came up out of the water. 
Why did Philip need to go down in the water to baptize this Ethiopian? Could have got out of the chariot if he wanted, didn't want to get chariot wet. Uh, why did he have to both get in the water? Friend, this is a clear example. As is every example that we see in the New Testament, baptism is always full body immersion. That is, sprinkling and pouring are not found as examples of baptism in the Bible. Let me give you some other passages to supplement this idea. John 3, verse 23. The Bible says John was baptizing in the region of Aenon near Salim. Listen to this little statement. Because there was much water there. Why did John need to go to that specific area to baptize? Because there was much water there. Well, why did he need much water? Because baptism is immersion, not sprinkling or pouring. Uh, let me give you another example. People often ask the question, what would Jesus do? And friend, that's a great question. What would Jesus do as it relates to the mode of baptism? One of the clearest pictures, Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. At the baptism of Jesus, the Bible says uh, that Jesus' baptism, as He was coming up out of the water, the Spirit descended upon Him like a dove. Now, let me ask this question. To come up out of water, what must you first do? You've got to go down into water. The literal Greek word is out of, out of the midst of the water. Jesus wasn't sprinkled and he, he didn't have a little water poured on him. He came up out of the water. And so Jesus' baptismal mode was immersion as well. But here's a very clear example. Romans 6 verses 1 through 4. The Bible likens baptism unto a burial. Now, let's stop and use that example for just a moment as it relates to the mode of baptism. I want you to think about the last time you went to a graveside where they buried the body. What happened at that graveside? Well, they dug a hole in the ground, and then what did they do? Did they take a shovel full of dirt and sprinkle a little on the body? Did they pour a couple of shovelfuls on it? No. They dug a hole in the ground. They placed that body in the hole. It's covered on the bottom covered on every side by dirt, then they completely engulf it. They completely immerse that body in the dirt. We're buried with Christ in baptism. Baptism in the Bible is a burial in water. And so every example from Acts 8 to John 3 to Romans 6 to Mark chapter 9, uh, Colossians chapter 2, we clearly see that baptism is immersion in the Bible. But friend, let's ask this question. What's the purpose of baptism? Why was this Ethiopian eunuch so eager and desperate when he saw water to be baptized? A oh, friend, the Bible teaches baptism is essential unto salvation. I want you to think of a few passages with me in the scripture. And we're going to put these on the screen for you to see as well. Mark 16, 16, Jesus said this, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that does not believe shall be condemned. Did Jesus say, you must be baptized to be saved? Friend, if He did, and you can clearly see He did, why would anyone say it's not essential? Acts 2, verse 38, the first time the gospel's been preached, Peter said, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission or the removal of sin. Think about 1 Peter 3, verse 21. There's a light figure which does also save us, baptism. Not the removal of the filth of flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. Peter said, Baptism does now also save us. You see, baptism is what puts us into Christ and where we contact His death. Ephesians 1 verse 3, all spiritual blessings are in Christ. Um, 2 Timothy 2 verse 10, salvation's in Christ. Here's man, he's outside of Christ, in Christ, where all spiritual blessings and salvation is, is where man needs to get, right? How does a person out here get into Christ? Notice Galatians 3.27. For as many of us as were baptized into Christ have clothed ourselves with Christ. And thus over and over and over again, the Bible clearly teaches baptism is for salvation. Friend, here's what I want you to know. 
When, the, when this man did all of that, everything Peter told him, then watch what happened. Look in Acts 8 verse 39. Now when they came up out of the water, isn't that significant? When they came up out of the water, watch this, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so they saw an eunuch no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. This man, who's still wet from the waters of baptism, goes on his way rejoicing. Why? Friend, because to have true joy, listen carefully. If you're going to have true joy, I'm talking about lasting meaningful joy of salvation, you can only have that when you've done what they did in the Bible to be saved. And so, friend, we ask you today, have you obeyed the truth? 1 Peter 1, verses 23 through 25. Have you obeyed the gospel of Christ? Romans 6, verse 17 and 18. Have you done what the Ethiopian eunuch did? Meaning this, have you heard the Word of God? That man had to hear the Gospel. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Have you believed in Jesus? That man definitely was told to believe in Christ. Unless you believe that He is the Son of God, you cannot be saved. Acts 8, verse 36 and 37, have you made the good confession? I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Have you repented of sin in your life? Unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Luke chapter 13, verse 3. And then, have you been immersed in water, not sprinkled, and not had a little water poured on you? Have you been buried with Christ in water for salvation? Listen again to the clarity of Jesus' words in Mark 16, 16. He that believes... Watch this now. And is baptized will be saved. He that does not believe shall be condemned. If you don't believe, you're not even a candidate to be baptized. But if you do believe and you're baptized, then you'll be saved. And so, friend, we're glad you joined us today. If you have questions about our lesson, you'd like for us to help you put you in contact with people who can help you obey the gospel, contact us and please join us next time as we're going to study another case of conversion in the book of Acts. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and Internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the